RC20 Retro Color. What's it capable of? Should you get it? Is it worth you buying it? What genre is it best for? You might be thinking lo-fi, but it can actually be used for a whole bunch of other genres, which I'm going to show you in this video. But my name's Fabian. Welcome to Off The Beat, the place where you get to discover your own sound. Now, as always, all of the product links are in the description below. And if you guys decide to purchase it, then I actually receive a small percentage of that. And that helps me with my channel and provide you guys with new content. So with that said, let me just show you what this thing is actually capable of. So we've got three examples here. We've got the lo-fi thing, which you probably might think that it's about. We've actually got like an EDM super saw and some drums. So let's start with the lo-fi. So this is without the RC20. And now if we turn this on. You can hear how much of a difference that makes. It kind of like adds this little crisp crispiness to the back. It kind of adds some detuning to it and just makes it sound more retro and more um, analog. That's the typical mindset that people think about RC20. But it can also help just bring your tracks to life. Have a listen to this. And now with it. How much brighter and crispier does that sound? Without it? With it. Man, that's next level. I actually put this on a whole bunch of my sounds and it just helps fill out the mix and just make it sound crispier and punchier. This is just a preset, like, this is just the, the short slapback preset. I haven't done anything special. Uh, now on drums, you can really help give your drum some sizzle, which is pretty sweet. Let's go without RC20. Now let's go with RC20. You can hear that sizzle on top. I bet I rarely use it on drums, but you can actually use it on like snares and and like hi hats just to give it that little bit of extra sizzle to help it cut through the mix. Now as for the presets, there's like there is so many presets in this thing. There's like 30 or 40 presets that come with it. They all sound like really pretty good, but there's some really clapped out ones which you, it will just absolutely destroy your sound. VHS is one of my favorites. Sad Piano is another one of my favorites. You can hear everything detuning. You can hear some things dropping out. And that's all controlled with the modules that are in this thing. And there's like six modules that you can customize. So we have the noise, which is basically just a noise oscillator. Wobble, which just adds a wobble to it, depending on how fast you have it set and everything. You can actually add like a flutter to it to make it and you can do that by fading this across here. It's kind of like a dry wet between the wow, the big wobble with a small flutter. That's so cool, isn't that? How cool is that? You got like a dry, uh, dry wet mix knob here and you can also add this flux thing. Now every one of these controls has flux, the flux capacitor. And what this does is basically adds randomness to the uh, wobbles and stuff like that, to whatever it's, it's modulating. So this one here is modulating those big wobble and the small wobbles and the flux just adds randomness. Can you hear how it's not, you can see how it's not following a, a straight uh, sine wave. It's kind of like, whoa, whoa, up and down, bounces over the place a little bit. So distort, pretty self-explanatory. Let's shut these other ones off so we can actually hear this one by itself. Whoa, okay, you can pretty, you know, you can get some pretty hardcore distortion and stuff with this. All right, let's go digital, which is like downsampling. sampling. 
Now this is just like a mini EQ. You can cut your highs and you can cut your lows and you can put the effect right in the position that you want it. Same thing here. You can change between your rate of your bit crush and the, the um, amount of down sampling you want to choose. Down here is pretty nice. The flux control can really be used to get some pretty unique sounds. So space is basically just like a reverb and yeah, it's like just a very sort of short reverb. Hear that? Without it? With it? That's full wet. You make me so wet, baby. Stereo is pretty cool. You turn stereo on, it sounds really wide. Without it, it sounds a bit narrower. With it, it's like, woo, a bit wider. And then last but not least, we have the magnetic, which is like, it, it drops in and out, which is can kind of be used for like some rhythmic types of stuff. And you can like set it all to, um, let me just show you. Like you could get some flume type of wop 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 you know what I mean? Like completely random, but I think you can really come up with some unique ideas like that. Now underneath all of these controls, just go back to the original sad piano preset. We have like this, these are like global controls. So we have the input gain, we have the output gain, we have width and a little EQ section in here, which we can add some highs to it, some lows to it, put a low cut. You know, we want to go like a toy, a toy box or something. You can maybe add a high shelf. Give it a little boost at the low frequencies, or you can add like a little low frequency thing here. Maybe a high cut. It's not like a full parametric EQ, but you do have a decent amount of control. Now you have a width control here as well. Now what I like to do, I like to automate this width control to get more mono as it gets closer to like a drop or a chorus because when the chorus hits then, it actually makes, and you open it back up, it makes it sound bigger and fuller. Now up the very top, you can see you have this magnitude fader. Now this is just a dry wet for them all. You can see how when I move it down, all of these move down together in a percentage. So you can actually automate that. So let me just click a boom. We got the magnitude set here. And then we can just go like this. So you can use that to create builds, effects, all that sort of stuff. Now just say you come up with a really cool preset that you like and you want to save it. You just click save here. You can uh, rename it. Let's go test. And then we're going to save it. And if we come back into our presets under user, you can see where your new presets are. Double click it, or OK it, and then you have your new preset come in. So you can use this preset now on absolutely any track and you can keep that same consistent sound across your music. But really, it's quite a little powerful tool. I think it's like a hundred bucks or something. I use it basically just to, to make my things cut through the mix and for some sound design techniques where I'm kind of struggling for ideas. I might get throw this on, just really start going wild until I find something that's really cool. And then I'll just build a song based on that. So I'll give you one example of how I used it. So this is a song I've been working on for a while. It's actually not finished yet, but I've got RC20 scattered throughout this whole thing. So what I've actually done is I've put it on my group of this whole section for it to turn on right when the pre-chorus hits.